The Toronto Zoo has some new additions to bison calves born at the end of July. All births are special, but these little guys are extra exciting for the zoo. Both were conceived through artificial insemination, including one calf that was conceived, get this, using 35-year-old sperm. That's a zoo first. Joining us from the zoo this morning is Dr. Gabriella Mastromonaco. She is the curator of the zoo's reproductive programs and research department. Good to have you with us, Gabriella. Nice to be here as well, thank you. So tell me first and foremost how the calves are doing. They're doing great. Uh, the two of them, they're just a week apart uh, from each other, so they found each other as playmates. Okay, so the calf uh, in which you use the 35-year-old sperm, tell us about that and the fact that this is 35-year-old sperm. Well, I mean, we're as amazed as everybody else. Uh, the fact that we've been um, keeping that sperm in, in perpetuity in our tanks here, and we felt that the technology was at a point where we could uh, thaw the sample and try to get the living offspring. Why, though? Why, why sperm that is so old? What's the benefit there? Our main goal is genetic diversity, and when you're talking about populations that are threatened and their numbers are, are not that high, then every animal counts. So uh, an am a sample that was frozen 35 years ago, that animal would be gone, their, their offspring might be gone, and so we're introducing very valuable genetic material back into our herd. And so this was wild sperm, not captive sperm, right? What, what's the difference, and why did you go with the wild? Well, one of the things is that we want to try to capture all the genetics that are remaining in the wild. And these captive herds play a very important role, as you can see, as surrogate mothers and surrogate genetic material. So it's important to try to introduce wild-caught material into these captive conservation herds. This is so interesting. Does that mean that these calves could be uh, maybe reintroduced into the wild? Perhaps not at this time, but the long-term goal for all species is that we have a, a very sustainable captive breeding population so that one day we can reintroduce them back into the wild. So what's the status of the wood bison right now in Canada? They're considered a threatened species, and um, Canadian biologists have done a great job at maintaining the species over the last 20, 30 years. So they've been reduced from uh, endangered to threatened, but they're still vulnerable in the sense that the anthropogenic impacts are still there for them. It's great that they've been reduced, though. And right now, we're, we're calling them little guys, but do they have names yet? That's a great question. They're <laughs> little guys to us as yeah. well. Uh, no, they haven't been named. They're special enough, they'll get great names once the time comes. <laughs> I love this. This is such a learning curve for, for everybody, but want to know, because you've been doing this for quite a while, how exciting this was for you and your team to not just conceive all of this, but to get it done. You know, some days we can't believe it ourselves, but um, if everyone can understand the picture, this is over 10 years of work of, of a group of people, a large teams coming together, veterinarians, nutritionists, us and reproductive programs. And we've just kind of been chipping away at the technology. And last year was a bit of a breakthrough where we felt that we could take this leap forward. And you most certainly did in grand fashion. Uh, Gabriella, we're gonna keep in touch, okay? Let us know if you decide on names, okay? Excellent, not a problem. <laughs> Take good care.